Hi, I'm Bill Fretz, and I'd like to introduce you to Fretz Miniature Steaks. We're going to take flat sheet metal in a dome shape. This is actually tubing, two inches again by seven eighths by 20 gauge, and transform it into a convex shape. We will use a nylon ended hammer to drive the metal down in the first course, and that way we won't stretch the metal, and it's very forgiving and it's relatively easy to do. The trick is to keep the metal in the same position on the stake as you're rotating it so the same amount of overhang is exposed. And as you rotate it, the metal will dome. The hole in the middle will become smaller, so you may need larger starting stock than with a concave bracelet because this is actually going to be compressed in and the gauge of the metal actually, if it's done correctly, will thicken. All the frets tools fit in a holder. They're a solid fit. At the first step, we're going to put lines on the piece as a reference point. Now what makes this project different from the concave bracelet is that this is convex, so it's going to be a dome. And it's actually quite different. We're going to put a starting line on and we're going to switch to a stake that has a dome to it. Now, what makes this really critical is that there's an air pocket between the stake and the metal stock that you're working on. You are compressing the metal down to the stake and when it reaches the stake, you stop hammering because you're not trying to stretch it at this time. You're just trying to move the metal. Now, we're going to rotate the same way and we're going to take small bites, overlapping hammer blows. The hammer comes in the middle of the stake and the piece rotates into that spot. In the beginning, I'm only trying to rotate the edge. And as I rotate it, the metal is doming. And we're only going to do the edge on the first course. Now I flip it over and we'll repeat it. I missed a little spot here. Now it's a little rough, so we're going to round it up on a mandrel. And that's the first course. It's a gentle curve. We haven't moved it a lot. So now we need to anneal it to dull red and then do another course to get a more extreme curve. And each time you raise it, this curve is going to become more extreme. When you reach a point where it finally conforms to this stake and you want to continue with a more extreme curve, we will switch to a stake that has a higher dome and we will do that on the next course and we will also start raising a little farther in. Right, we're going to repeat putting the lines on the piece that has been domed. Our starting line. Now this curve we're going to start farther up You can see that I'm actually, there's still an air gap here. I'm compressing the metal against the stake. Now you notice I did have to move the hammer to a lower position. The donut hole on the inside here, as the metal curves, is getting smaller, which means this is going to make a smaller bracelet than the concave bracelet. So you will probably have to start with slightly larger stock. So the general rule is that convex shapes, 
you're going to have to experiment with for the size depending on the curve and how long the strip is going to be. Now the planishing is the next step. We're switching from a nylon hammer to a steel planishing hammer. On a really extreme curve like this, the flat hammer is probably going to give us a rather dramatic texturing. We're going to go around And sound is important again. You have to listen for a solid hit. If it sounds wobbly, you're not hitting the middle of the stake. Now when I get back to the starting position, I will rotate down and make another round. If you want the piece to become totally smooth, you would hammer lighter and lighter. You would go over the whole piece and then probably anneal it and do another course. But this time, when you're planishing, you'd be hammering with about this level of hardness. and it gets smoother and smoother. You can get to the point where the hammer marks will actually disappear. If you want it to look really hand wrought and have a dramatic uh, marks to it, you would use the round side of the hammer. I'll do a little area to show you. So the choice of the hammer on which side you use is critical. And thank you very much. And I'm Bill Fretz, and I'm glad you joined us.